Now that we've spent a lot of time learning how to get those spirals through the body, we're going to add a component that helps us work on our balance. And we've worked on it to an extent with building that awareness of the center of gravity as we're moving. That awareness is definitely going to help us maintain balance. But something that we want to do in addition to that is actually work on balance. So standing on one leg as we go through a motion. So we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing. I'm not throwing anything new at you, only instead of keeping the feet stationary with this motion, we're going to move the feet. So as the hands come across to one side, we're going to step in. They're going to go through that same change, and as they go across to the other side, we're going to step out. So we're going to start like we did before. Start with a slightly wider stance, shifted to the right, right hand out to the right corner, left hand palm up. We're going to shift to the left, the hands are going to change. So the left comes up, the right goes down. As they come across though, instead of just turning, we're going to come across and we're going to step in with the right foot. So this is where that balance comes in. Really focus on the stability and moving your weight and your root into your left leg as the hands are coming across. And you're going to pull this right leg in and set it down next to the left leg as you reach that end point. You're going to shift the weight to the right leg instead of shifting over. Remember we were shifting back as the hands were changing before. Instead of having a full shift where the body weight is obviously moving to the right leg, since the feet are right next to each other, you're going to shift that weight, but it's not going to be super obvious. So your weight's transferring from the left foot to the right foot. So here, as the hands change, shift your weight to the right foot. And now as the hands come across, you're going to step out to the left with the left foot. Here. Set the toe down. And as you shift your weight to that left foot, the hands are going to change. And as they come across, you're going to pull the right foot in. So think of it this way. If I'm moving to my left, so each time I take a step out, I'm going to the left, doing like the sideways walk. Anytime my hands go to the left, I need to pull that right leg along because it wants to stay behind, right? So I've stepped out to the left. Well, now I'm going to the left, and I need to pull that right leg along. So think about this hand. Once it drops down, I've shifted. As it comes across, think of it grabbing this pant leg and pulling it across. Okay, you're not actually going to do that, but think of it as drawing that right leg in. The bottom hand is drawing that leg in. Well, I'm continuing to go to the left, so the next time my hands come across, I'm stepping out to the left. And then my hands change, and as I come across toward the left, that bottom hand is pulling the right leg in to the left side. So if I'm going to the left, I'm always stepping out with the left foot, always stepping in with the right foot, always stepping out with the left foot, always stepping in with the right foot. When I step out, the hands go in the opposite direction. So every time I'm stepping, my hands are moving across the body. When I step out, so the feet are getting further apart, the hands are getting further apart from the foot. So open. Then when I'm going to the left, everything is going to the left together. So the right leg's coming in and the hands are going with it. So it's everything comes into the left, things separate as I step out with the left foot. So to the right and open the legs, separate. Close the legs together. So the legs and the foot move together as I close. The hands and the foot move apart from each other as I open. So hands and leg close. Hands and leg separate. So let's do this a couple of times with you following along with me so you can get a feel for how this goes. Then we're going to try going to the right. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to shift to the left. This is exactly what we've done before, but as the hands come across, instead of coming across with my feet separated, they're going to pull that right leg in. They're going to change, shifting the weight to the right leg, and then as they come across, I'm going to step out. They're going to change as I shift, and then as I come across, I'm going to pull that bottom leg in. They're going to change as I shift to the right foot, and then as they come across, I'm going to step out with the left foot. And they're going to change, and I'm going to step in. Before we try doing this on the right side, I want to emphasize that this is working on our balance because we're coordinating all the things that we've done well previously. With these exercises, you want to be careful with your balance. When you're standing on one foot and you're stepping out, you don't want to step out in a way where you fall onto that foot. That's losing control of your balance, and it's not as stable, it's not as safe. So you want to maintain what we would call a root. So imagine you have a root growing into the ground, that expansion through the leg into the ground that's keeping you stable over this leg. From this place of stability, you're going to step out and gently touch with the foot. Now, what you should be able to do is pick that foot up and bring it back easily without having to have a big push off from that leg. If you have to push off, then you've stepped too far. 
So what you want to do is step out, gently touch, be able to pick that up, set it down, and shift to that foot. Then you shift your root, you establish your root in this leg, and you're able to pick this leg up and bring it in or put it back out. So all your root is here. Then you shift. And that's how this is going to help increase your ability to be aware of your balance and also control your balance. Now we're going to try this exercise going to the right. So we're going to start over here on the left. So the weight will be shifted to the left. We'll have a spiral through the legs. The right hand's going to be down low, the left hand up high. We're going to shift to the right leg as the hands change. And then as the hands come across, we're going to step in with that left foot and bring the feet together. From here, the hands are going to change again as we shift to the left leg. And they're going to go across to the left side as we step out with the right foot. They're going to change as we shift to the right and come across as we step in with the left foot. So it's the same thing, the only difference is we're stepping to the right. So it's step out with the right, in with the left, out with the right, in with the left. As you're doing this, again, as the feet separate, the hands go in the opposite direction of the foot. So as my foot goes to the right, my hands go to the left. So feet separate, foot and hand separate. So it's this. From here, when I bring the feet together, the foot and the hands move together, so everything goes across to the right together. So here, the feet come together and the hands move with the foot coming across. We're going to start in our wider stance, shifted to the left, turn to the left with the left hand extended out to the corner and the right hand palm up on the left side. We're going to shift to the right as the hands change and then as they come across, we're going to step in with the left foot here. We're going to shift to the left foot, the hands are going to change. And as they come across, we're going to step out with the right foot here. From here, the hands change as we shift to the right. And then as we come across, we're going to step in with the left foot here. The hands are going to change as you shift to the left foot. And as they come across, you're going to step out with the right foot. From here, the hands change as you shift to the right foot. And everything comes in together to the right side. So before this exercise that we're doing right now with the stepping and moving the arms and feet together, all the exercises that you've done so far have just been solo exercises. This movement is actually a movement that's found in Tai Chi forms. It's called wave hands like clouds or cloud hands. And in the form, it's practiced as a continuous motion. When you first start, you're going to have starts and stops. And you're going to be figuring out what foot's moving at what time with the hands. That's totally normal. That's totally fine. As you get used to it, you want to smooth it out so that instead of starting here and thinking, I'm shifting, I'm stepping, I'm shifting, I'm stepping. Instead of doing it in pieces like that, you're going to go from here and you're just going to let it flow. So each movement goes into the next movement. And this is one of the beautiful things about Tai Chi that people really appreciate as they're learning it, is learning that continuous flow of motion. That gives this a very meditative property as you go through and you're present and aware of what's going on in your body you're maintaining your alignment, you're maintaining smooth motion, it adds a very calming and like I said, meditative aspect to Tai Chi. So that's kind of the goal that we're working toward with this exercise. And this is one movement that you would find in a Tai Chi form. It's not, of course, the whole form, but you can get a lot out of this movement by itself. You can start at one side of a room, go through this motion all the way across the room. And when you get to that side of the room, then you can go back and do that motion going all the way back. So you don't need an entire Tai Chi form to get that flow, to get Tai Chi exercise, to get the benefits of practicing Tai Chi. Obviously, if you learn more movements, if you learn a whole form, you have more movement variation, you have more things that you are requiring from your body and requiring that you maintain that good structure and that centered focus as you go through all these other movements. So I really think there is benefit to learning a whole Tai Chi form or learning multiple forms. But if you don't have time for that, or if you don't have the interest in learning that much Tai Chi, just this exercise is enough to get you a lot of the benefits of Tai Chi with balance, body coordination, structure, and adding that sort of stressor of a lot of movements happening at once while focusing on that inner strength that we worked on in the previous video as the support for everything that you're doing. So congratulations on learning your first Tai Chi movement. This is an excellent exercise, as I've said before, that can carry you through a lot of years of training on its own.